Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to be talking about acute traumatic brain injury. I will warn you that some of the images that I'm going to be showing um, are a bit graphic and might not be appropriate for all ages. If you like this video and would like to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also check out our website and Facebook page, all titled Adventures in Neuropathology. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only. If you have a question or a concern about your health or the health of a loved one, please talk to your doctor. Okay, let's get started. Before we delve too deeply within the acute traumatic brain injury topic, first we need to review a few um, basic principles. Number one, anatomy. Okay, so here is a picture of the brain that I got off of Wikimedia, okay, and um, it's showing the brain from the left side. So we're looking at the person on their left side. This is the front of the brain. This is called the frontal lobe, this blue lobe. This is the side of the brain. It's called the temporal lobe, and um, it forms this temporal tip here. The very back of the brain is the occipital lobe, which is responsible for vision. And then the yellow lobe depicted here, this is the parietal lobe. Underneath the brain, um, we have the brain stem, which is depicted right here, and then also the cerebellum, which is right here. So that's our very brief review of uh, brain anatomy. And when we talk about injury, we need to remember that the brain is not um, solidified within the skull. It does have a little bit of um, um, ability to move around within the skull. When a force is applied to the outside skull, um, as in the case of trauma, that force gets uh, transmitted to the brain, but it varies depending on where the force is. So I want to show you this image that I got off of this uh, website here, All Behavior is Meaningful, um, and it is from uh, this blogspot.com, traumatic brain injury, blast injury induced. And um, I wanted to show you this because I think it's a great representation of what happens to the brain when there's an injury. So an uh, a injury occurs to one side of the brain in this particular depiction. It's in the very frontal portion of the brain. Um, but the brain is able to move a little bit within the skull. So when the skull moves in response to this injury, the brain inside the skull will move as well. Remember that it um, um, has some buoyancy within the cerebrospinal fluid. And in this image, it's represented by the blue between the skull and the uh, brain. So the blue area represents the cerebrospinal fluid that is able to um, um, support the brain within the skull. And so when an injury is applied to the brain, um, it is able to move within the skull. So what ends up happening is you have an injury where the um, where the force was applied. So in this example, it's in the frontal lobe, that injury. But you also have an injury in the back of the skull as well. So in this example, it's going to be in the occipital and parietal cortex. Um, and this is called a coup contra coup injury, um, basically meaning that the brain is going to be injured where the force of impact is, but it's also going to have an injury at the opposite end or someplace far away from the brain. And I want to point out that the frontal lobe and the temporal tips of the lobes, let's go back to this, um, back to this image. So here is the frontal lobe. This is the blue area. And the, the temporal lobe, this is the green area. These um, areas are just above the skull base, which has a lot of bumps and ridges where the uh, cranial nerves are coming out and going in to the um, um, skull. And so where the cranial nerves are in entering and exiting, um, there's a lot of bumps and grooves and ridges underneath here. So when this brain is moving back and forth on the, the frontal lobe surface, um, that gets a lot of injury to this region. 
In addition, the temporal tips, uh, there, um, there is a, the portion of bone, skull bone, that supports the temporal tips right here. And so when there's an injury um, involving the brain, where the brain is kind of rocketing back and forth and back and forth, that temporal tip gets injured right here. Okay, so um, so this is important to realize, and it's going to uh, explain what we're going to see in this brain that I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's look at the actual brain itself. Um, so this brain uh, that I'm going to show you was taken from a person who had uh, a recent traumatic brain injury, and this is what it looks like. So what we've done is we've removed the brain from the skull and we've turned it upside down. So we're looking at the undersurface of the brain. So this would be the person's right frontal lobe, which corresponds to the blue area in the diagram. This is the person's left frontal lobe, which is the opposite blue area in the diaphragm, uh, in the diagram here. This is the uh, temporal lobe and the tips of the temporal lobe here in the, um, the right side of the person and the left side of the person corresponding to the green area seen in the diagram. The back of the brain represents the occipital lobes here and here, and that is represented by this pink or red area um, here. So the um, basal uh, infratentorial portions of the brain, which include the cerebellum and the, the um, brainstem, have been removed here. So we've cut off the brainstem right about here at the level of the midbrain. And so we're looking at the undersurface of this brain. And what we see is that uh, there is subarachnoid hemorrhage, meaning uh, just under that leptomeninges uh, that covers the surface of the brain. So there's hemorrhage here on the orbital surfaces of the frontal lobes, here on the right frontal lobe, and here on the left frontal lobe. So that would correspond to this area just on the undersurface of this blue uh, lobe here. Um, and if we go back to our, our um, representation here, that would correspond to this area right here. <laughs> and it is the area where it's, over, it's, over, um, it's located over a lot of the ridges and bumps and grooves that you see on the undersurface of the, um, the skull. Um, the skull base on the undersurface of this of this brain, and so when the brain is kind of rocketing back and forth, it's rubbing up against the um, bumps and grooves that are part of the skull base, and so you get a lot of hemorrhage in the orbital surfaces of the frontal lobes here and here. Okay, so in the orbital frontal surfaces in this particular brain, um, we see a lot of injury here, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Um, most likely corresponding to contusion underneath, which we'll see in just a minute. Um, also, other areas that can be injured in this type of um, in this type of injury are the tips of the temporal lobes, uh, and this would be the tip of the left temporal lobe here, and then the tip of the right temporal lobe here. And this particular brain does not seem to have a lot of injury in that area, and the tips here of the temporal lobes. The other thing that you want to look for for uh, injury in brains is um, mass effect, which can be caused by uh, cerebral edema. And um, the mass effect can uh, cause herniations. And herniations is basically where a, 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 a normal brain gets uh, pushed into an abnormal location. And we can see evidence of this on the undersurface of this brain right here. Okay, and maybe a little bit right here, but definitely right here. So what is this? This is the parahippocampal gyrus and the medial most aspect of this temporal lobe, which again corresponds to the green area. The medial most aspect of this temporal lobe is called the uncus. And what we see here is evidence of uncle herniation. Uncle herniation is characterized um, by um, herniation of the uncus, which is this medial most aspect of the temporal lobe, where it gets um, pushed um, through the opening created by the uh, tentorium cerebelli, which is a, um, a piece of dura, which is located uh, right along here, which has been removed in this brain. And um, anytime you have a soft tissue, 
pushing up against a hard tissue, the soft tissue is going to lose out. So in this example, the soft tissue of the brain pushing up against the hard tissue of the dura, um, the, the brain tissue is going to lose. And so what we see here is uh, areas where that soft brain tissue has been pushing up against the firm tissue of the dura, and uh, it has been bruised, uh, which... Uh, uh, the fancy word for bruise is contusion. And um, if you were to feel this with your finger, it would feel soft because there's probably a bit of necrosis there where the tissue has lost its blood supply um, and the tissue begins to die. One of the other things that is important about uh, uncal herniations is that coming out in this area, we don't see it because it's uh, covered by this kind of leptomeninges here, but coming out right around here and right around here is the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor third cranial nerve. And so when there's a contusion, uh, sorry, when there's a herniation of the uncus, it's going to push in on that third cranial nerve. And clinically, what that results in um, is a blown pupil. So the parasympathetic fibers running from the Edinger-Westfall nucleus of the third cranial nerve, um, they get compressed, and then you lose innervation uh, to the um, to the eye, and and when you lose the parasympathetic innervation, the sympathetic uh, innervation takes over and then you get a blown pupil or where that that iris expands so the pupil pupillary diameter gets much much larger um, and so that's why it's really really bad when you see um, in in uh, an emergency situation where somebody says hey he's got a blown pupil this is what they're talking about they're saying that he's starting to herniate in his brain where part of the brain tissue is getting pushed over to where it shouldn't be because there's cerebral edema because that tissue has been injured okay so what we see here is um, uh, uncle herniation um, and what we would have seen on the uh, cerebrum which I don't have that um, here sorry the cerebellum which I don't have that here is we um, probably could see um, uh, tonsillar herniation and other kinds of herniation um, but let's move on okay so let's say that we take this brain and we slice through it um, like cutting through a, a slice of bread so um, slice through here and slice through there um, so that we can see the inside of this brain and see what kind of injuries are there and so that's what this next picture is going to be this next picture is a cut through the frontal lobes so this is where we've cut kind of like cutting a, um, a loaf of bread cut through the frontal lobes uh, which is represented by the blue area in this diagram and when we cut through those frontal lobes we can see that on the um, sorry about that when we cut through these frontal lobes we can see that on the under surface of this frontal lobe there is a contusion here and notice that the contusion isn't like deep down in the um, sulci it's more along the crest of the gyri so right here right here right here all these areas these are contusions where that um, brain has been um, um, pushed up against the or rubbing up against the um, basal um, uh, skull base and so this is this is essentially the injury that we're seeing here is the undersurface of this brain um, and so when we cut into the brain and we take a look at it we can see that there are these injuries here on the undersurface of the brain um, and these are a little bit of um, uh, hemorrhage here and then we've lost some of the uh, tips of this uh, gyrus here and a little bit of this gyrus here um, because that has been injured. Um, if we look down at this other area we can see that we're at the level of the genu of the corpus callosum which is this white matter tract that cor cor um, that connects the left and the right hemispheres and if we take a look down here, we can see something very similar uh, where the, um, the gyri have been injured here and uh, some of the tissue has been um, 
uh, injured and is now missing um, because because that tissue has been injured. So we see little hemorrhages here, little little guys here and here and here, and this is very very indicative of a uh, coup contra coup type lesion um, where um, the the brain kind of bounced back and forth within the skull. The inferior surface of the frontal lobes has kind of been um, uh, uh, injured and and um, rubbed the wrong way. And so now we have this contusion and we have loss of this tissue here uh, with associated edema. Okay, our, our next cut is going to be a little bit um, further back. So if we come back here, we're going to make our next cut a little bit further back. And uh, this is a little bit more juicy. Um, I forgot to blot off uh, some of the fluids. Um, so it's a little bit more juicy, and I uh, apologize for that. But what, we're, what we've done is we have cut through the brain right around here or so, um, where we're getting the, the tips of the sorry, where we're getting the uh, temporal lobes in addition to um, the frontal lobes as well, okay? So we're getting this um, temporal lobe, and that is this guy right here, okay? So this would be the green area, and over here would be the green area represented in the uh, diagram. And remember, let, let's go back, let's go back. Remember when we talked about this uncle herniation? Well, we're making a cut right through here where we're looking at this area right here and that, that corresponds to this area right here. So this is, if we go a little bit higher power, this is uncle herniation. Okay, so this here, this blood here, and this blood here very much is corresponding with what we saw on the um, gross examination or the external examination of the brain um, and corresponds to that uncle herniation here and here. So uh, this part of the brain, this is, oh, we're getting a little bit of the hippocampus here. Here we have a little bit of the amygdala. Um, and we've got this uh, injury here on the on the um, undersurface of the uncus, on the medial aspect of the temporal lobe. This is very indicative of um, an uncle herniation, a uh, contusion type injury. Um, is located here. The other type of uh, herniation that we can get um, associated with injury and particularly with um, cerebral edema, so the, the brain gets injured and then you start to get this um, edematous um, appearance and so the brain tissue itself starts to take up more space. The other uh, issue that we can find in uncle her uh, the other issue that we can find as far as herniation goes is um, a sub- uh, falcine herniation, where the cingulate gyrus gets pushed under the um, uh, falx cerebri. So the falx cerebri is a piece of dura that goes right in between the, the two upper medial halves of the frontal lobe and parietal lobe. So in between the left blue yellow and red area corresponding to the frontal, parietal, and occipital lobe on the left side and then uh, the frontal, parietal, and occipital lobe on the right side between these two hemispheres running down right down the center is something called a falx, F-A-L-X, falx cerebri. And this is a piece of dura that's pretty tough. And so sometimes if you get uh, injury to the brain and you get cerebral edema or any other kind of mass effect, you can have a, a situation where a portion of the uh, cingulate gyrus, which is this gyrus right here located above the corpus callosum, um, you can get an uh, uh, injury of the cingulate gyrus where it gets pushed underneath the dura um, located in between these two hemispheres. And so this is a uh, section of the brain showing that, sorry, it's a, it's a little messy here, but um, here this would be where the um, falx cerebri would be located in between the two hemispheres, right? We can see where there's injury of the cingulate gyrus, um, uh, the cingulate gyri here and here where it's been pushed up against the um, um, tentorium sorry, where it's been pushed up against the uh, dura of the falx, um, and it's caused this contusional injury here and here. So, 
So what we see overall in this brain is that this person had an acute traumatic injury which caused um, a lot of uh, uh, hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, and also a contusional type injury in the um, brain tissue of the orbital frontal surfaces here. Uh, and then we also saw a herniation and contusional injury um, in the uncus of the um, mesial temporal lobe here. Um, and um, so this is very indicative of uh, trauma type injury. And if we remember to, um, if we remember that injury to the brain, the brain is able to move a little bit within the, uh, within the skull. Um, and so if we think about the way that the brain moves in the skull, then we can have a easier time of understanding how uh, the brain um, uh, shows injury patterns uh, during our gross examination. Okay, so that completes the uh, discussion on acute traumatic brain injury. Uh, we will be doing a, uh, another video on uh, remote traumatic brain injury. So thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see more videos uh, like this, um, please subscribe to our uh, Facebook um, Instagram and YouTube channel, all titled uh, Adventures in Neuropathology. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much and join us next time.